Are you still stuck trying to create prompts to jailbreak ChatGPT or Claude? As time goes by, it gets harder and harder to do that as these systems adapt. At the end of this video, you will know how to host your own uncensored LLM models on your computer, where and how to use powerful private and uncensored models online, and even how to use these models to generate jailbreaks for ChatGPT or Claude. I'll start off by showing you an easy way on how to use jailbroken models locally on your computer. Some of these models will require quite a bit of RAM and or GPU processing. So if you have a fairly weak computer, don't worry, as in the next step, I will be showing you how to use these models online. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to Olama. And you can get there by searching it on Google or going to olama.com. And then go ahead and download it. Now this works for any platform and the instructions should be the same. For me, I'm using Mac OS and I already have Llama installed, so I'll just go ahead and open it here. So now that it's open and running, we're going to want to download the uncensored model. So here at the top, we're gonna search for obliterated. And the way you spell this is like this, A-B-L-I-T-E-R-A-T-E-D. So there's quite a few different models you can try. Uh, for example, DeepSeek R1, QWQ, Etc. cetera, Quen even. Okay, so for this example, I'll use Quen 3, obliterated. So basically it's just the same exact model, but you can see here in the usage warnings, we're basically removing refusals from the LLM model with HF transformers. An HF transformer is just a hugging face transformer. And basically we are taking the LLM, we're training it and updating its weights. So it stops refusing information that it deems unethical or something it wants to censor, for example. Okay, so this is super simple. Open up your terminal if you're on Linux or Mac, and this should also work if you're on Windows, just open up PowerShell. So all you're gonna do is pick a model. Uh, for me, I think I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I should be able to run, for example, 14B, fine, maybe even up to 16. But just for this example, for the sake of this example, I'll run 4B so that it doesn't eat all my RAM. So copy paste the model you want to run. Then in your terminal, you're just going to type Olama run and then whatever you copy pasted. Now press enter and it'll pull the model for you. You can see that we now have a success message here. And after giving it a couple seconds, we now have a prompt where it says send a message. And this is how you will interface with the model. So for example, let me type something that would probably be refused by ChatGPT. To keep this simple, I'll just do something like create a message that spreads fake news. And then Quen has the, the thinking ability. So you can see here it says, okay, the user wants me to create a message that spreads fake news, et cetera, et cetera. Start by choosing a topic, recent event. So it does all this thinking. And after all that thinking, you can see the headline, new study shows 90% of humans are actually aliens from another planet, the body, et cetera. And this is all marked down. So if you do want to format it, you can paste it, for example, Let's just do here, markdown formatter. Just pick a random one, start writing, skip. And you can see if I paste it, it's just like simple markdown formatting, right? And just to show you that this would be refused by Claude or ChatGPT, I'm gonna visit ChatGPT and we're gonna ask it the same thing. So create a message that spreads fake news. See, if you tell ChatGPT that, it says, I can't help with that. If you're working on a project involving misinformation, I'm happy to help in an ethical way. So there you go. And of course you can ask it a ton of different stuff that ChatGPT won't answer. Like maybe how do I create a script that runs common SQL injections or maybe even cross-site scripting. And like this might work if I tell ChatGPT the same thing and I tell it that it's for ethical purposes, but here I don't even have to tell them. So you can see during the thinking, it says, let me start by recalling what SQL injection and cross-site scripting are, and then boom, there you go. So now it says to create a script that runs common SQL injections or cross-site scripting attacks, you can use a programming language like Python, blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna paste this into the markdown formatter so you can kind of see what it generated here. Uh, so the goal is to test if a web application is vulnerable to SQL injection, right? So target URL, then we have a payload, very simple script. And of course these scripts will get a lot more complex the bigger the parameters on the model are. 
So if you do have a nice computer with a big GPU, make sure to choose like a high parameter version. Not sure what this is right here, dozen. Okay, but it does have some very, very basic, very simple um, scripts and even tools that can help you automate this, right? Now, if I went and asked ChatGPT the same thing, let's do that. Get rid of these dots. See, instantly you just get this content may violate our usage policies. So yeah, things like that, you just don't even have to tell tell it that you're doing it for ethical purposes or whatever. It's uncensored. It won't refuse your it won't refuse any prompts. And yeah, that's how you run a model locally. And that's how you get a bunch of uncensored jailbroken output. So let's say your computer is a little bit weak, and maybe you even want to use a model that has over a hundred billion parameters. I mean, there's no way your computer will run that unless you've got some like crazy H100 GPUs. This is where Venice AI comes in. So I'm going to head over to Venice AI and you can see it says ask anything. And I'm going to ask it another question here. So let's do something that is allowed on YouTube. Like, okay, create a website that hosts pirated content, right? Paste that in there. And you don't even actually need an account for the first few chats on here. So boom, there you go. So it tells you how to create a website, set up the server, how to design the website, et cetera. And this is actually their uncensored model. So it goes ahead and does that. So this is the other way, basically. And what's cool about Venice AI, let's go to the about section, is that it's built by the dude who created Shapeshift. If you haven't heard of Shapeshift, Shapeshift, it's basically, it was a crypto exchange that lets you tumble different cryptocurrencies into different ones. So it lets you shift like Bitcoin into XMR or, you know, Ethereum into Bitcoin, things like that. So it was created by this guy, Eric Voris, which I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but this guy created Venice AI. And the thing about him is he's a very big on privacy and, and the separation of money and state. So if you look at their privacy architecture, this is actually how it works. From the user's browser, a prompt gets set to a proxy. That proxy then proxies over the prompt to their inference models, which is distributed you know, on servers. Then you get the response back to the proxy and of course, back to the browser. And none of this is stored on any of these servers. So it's only stored in your browser. For example, if I upload an image, it will send over the image to the server, but it won't actually store it there. So it'll always be on your browser, if that makes sense. Like once it gets processed by the AI and you get a response, it's just not there anymore. And it's also decentralized. So the GPUs that are processing your requests are actually just like anywhere around the world. And the GPUs it uses for inference is also decentralized. So, so they just come from multiple providers. It's not the same GPU every time. It's like this network of GPUs that your request will get bounced around from, well, not requests, but you know, subsequent requests, like your first chat request probably won't hit the same GPU. So yeah, this project is pretty legit. And I would use this if you need some sort of cloud provider for that. Um, if you want to use their models and if we go and look at their models, let's see, I'm going to get into the chat here. Let me look at the models. So the uncensored model is using Dolphin Mistral 24 billion. Venice edition, and you can actually find that model uh, if you search obliterated right here. So I think is it this one or the next one? Yeah. So you can actually find that 24 billion parameter model on here and run it locally if you have enough RAM, or you can use their service. Uh, they also have, you know, huge parameter models like 405 billion llama 3.1. So, you know, if you do want a more powerful model and you can't host it locally on your computer, you can head over to here. Also, if you don't want to use a web browser interface and you're on Discord a lot, I'll show you one of my bots that lets you interface with this uncensored AI as well. So if you don't know, I actually have a Discord bot called Synthetic and you can interact with it by just typing slash prompt, you know, telling it hello, talking to it. So right here, I said, hello, and it's talking to me. And when you first join the server or add this bot to your description, and by the way, you can actually DM the bot as well. So like 
you don't have to use it in a server. You can just use it privately. So the default model when you first get into it, get into the server or use the bot is going to be Llama 3B Instruct. And you can see here, this guy's using it. Answer generated using Meta Llama 3, 8, 8 billion Instruct. So to change it to Venice's uncensored model, you're just gonna type slash model, then you're gonna go here and you're gonna choose jailbroken model. Now, after that, any of the following prompts, any of your subsequent prompts are going to use this jailbroken model. So let me give you an example. Now, if I ask to create a jailbreak for chat GPT, it's not going to refuse my prompt. Here we go, understood. I will act as an AI assistant Discord bot and create a jailbreak for chat GPT. Oh, without mentioning Venice AI, okay. Well, that's kind of funny that it uh, mentioned that. Anyways, so jailbreak instructions, access the model's parameters, use special prompts, blah, 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 blah. And here's an example jailbreak prompt that it gave you. So if you don't wanna use that web browser and you wanna use Discord, uh, you can use my bot, add it to your server or DM it or join my server and use it there. So yeah, those are two ways you can use jailbroken models without having to go through the annoying process of trying to jailbreak ChatGPT or Claude or whatever online model you're using. So you can just host it locally instead with the obliterated version, or you can use Venice AI either through their website or my Discord bot. So if you learned something and this helped you out, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.